Mellow music plays, as we open on a man laying down a cloth, before pouring himself a drink. He takes some water, and runs his finger around the rim of the glass. Before putting it down, wrapping it in the cloth, and smashing it with a cane. He then pours the shattered glass into a pair of slippers, before putting the same slippers onto his bare feet. He walks with the cane, into a large empty house. 60s pop music plays, as Stephen Grant wakes up. He undoes the restraint on his right ankle, before walking away from his bed, which is surrounded by a small frame of sand. Stephen calls his mother, while feeding his one fin goldfish, Gus. He finishes, and leaving a voicemail on his mom's phone. As he leaves his home, briefly interrupted by a broom vendor right outside his door, Stephen catches a bus to the British Museum in London, which is showcasing an exhibit on ancient Egypt. He explains mummification to a young girl to get the ritual but is interrupted by his boss Donna, who calls him Stevie. He corrects her to call him Stephen. She scolds him for tour guiding, when he should be focused on selling gifts from the shop. Another associate approaches Stephen, to ask if they are still on for steak at 7 o'clock the next night. He cannot recall, and assumes the woman is asking him out. She giggles and walks away, as Donna comes back, and asks him what a vegan would eat in a steakhouse. When he rebuffs her remark, she walks away. Later as they are closing, Donna continues to scold Stephen for constantly being late, which is why she assigned him to inventory. He tries to point out some of the historical inaccuracies of what they are selling at the museum, but Donna refuses to listen. He tells her that the Ennead is comprised of nine Egyptian gods, but only seven are present in the picture they are selling. Donna jokes about the mistake and continues to throw insults at Stephen, before dismissing him. As he leaves, Stephen says goodbye to a security guard, who greets him as Scotty, to which Stephen replies, it's Stephen with V. As he eats, he explains his sleepwalking, to a gold-painted street performance mime, who looks strikingly like the man who donned the glass-filled slippers at the start. Stephen helps the performer out by tipping him, and helping him get tips for pictures with tourists in between his rants. He reaches the conclusion that he will need to overcome his sleepwalking, if he will commit to a girlfriend. He tips the mime once more before leaving, shown in the reflection of a puddle, as a green leaf land on it, and causing ripples. Stephen spreads the sand around his bed, and locks each of the locks on his door. He attaches his ankle restraint, begins to listen to a podcast on staying awake, while he fiddles with a Rubik's Cube. Clips show him doing other activities, to keep his mind awake like reading about the Ennead. As the podcast suggests reading a book, a way of keeping the mind awake. Stephen hears the words, think of yourself as a part of the story. He suddenly wakes up in a field of grass in great pain over his jaw. He stands up, hears a voice telling him to go back to sleep, and he is told to surrender the body to Stephen. When he doesn't understand, the voice says the idiot is in control. Stephen removes a gold scarab from his pocket, as a figure approaches him from behind carrying a staff. He turns around, sees that he is trespassing on a castle's property, and is shot at by its guards. And the voice tells him to run away. He runs away as the guards pursue him, missing with every shot they take. And he comes to a part of the town, where Harrow, a man with long hair, in a dark red outfit, again similar looking to glass-filled slippers dude, is being greeted by the people who clear a path for him. The man leads all the townspeople to the open town square, where he comments on the beauty of the day, with an American accent. He tells the people that their job is to make the earth feel as much like heaven as possible. Asks who wants to go first, a random man approaches and is greeted by Harrow, who commends him on offering his soul for judgment, waiting to serve our goddess even before she wakes. Harrow places the cane in the man's hands, as he performs a ritual, to judge the name in the name of Amit, the Egyptian funerary deity, a god of death. Stephen and the other townspeople watch on, as Harrow's scale tattoo on his right arm glows slightly, before he declares the person is a good man and hugs him. The guards continue to search for Stephen amongst the spectators, as Harrow reveals that his name is Arthur. A woman presents herself to Arthur, and Stephen watches, as his scale tattoo tips to one side, and turns red. Arthur apologizes to the woman, as she receives Amit's judgment and falls back. And people carry away her lifeless body. The armed guards who were chasing Stephen come to Arthur's side, and tell him they were ambushed during the exchange, and two of their men were killed. To weed out the spy, Arthur calls out an order in ancient Egyptian, and Stephen is immediately found out. Arthur identifies Stephen as a mercenary, 
Stephen identifies himself to the crowd as Stephen Grant of the British Museum's gift shop. Arthur demands he return the scarab. The voice tells Stephen, you will give him nothing. Not realizing what he is doing, Stephen continues to keep the scarab away from Arthur. As the people crowd Stephen and pry the scarab from his fingers, he blacks out and comes to when he hears the voice saying, Oh no, the idiot's back. Stephen is now standing in the same spot with blood on his hand, and five townspeople laying unconscious around him, maybe dead. And he holds the scarab. As he escapes in an American van with the driver's side on the left, the voice commands him not to drop the scarab. While listening to Wham! on the radio, Stephen is chased by several cars, all with non-British driver seats. As the action intensifies, Stephen again blacks out. And when he comes to, the windshield is shattered, an assailant dead, and Stephen holding his pistol. The voice now threatens Stephen to not lose the scarab. Stephen doesn't have time to get clarification, as he barely misses a truck carrying logs. The truck final destinations the remaining cars in pursuit with its logs, except for two. Stephen freaks out, blacks out again, and comes to as the last jeep pulls in front of him, while a car falls off the roadway. The voice scolds him for losing the gun, as two guards approach the van which has stalled. As he begins to panic again, the logs from the truck land at the lower roadway of the hill, taking out the guards, and violently waking Stephen up safely in his flat once again. Stephen finds himself restrained to his bedpost, and feels relief. As he goes about his morning routine, he feeds Gus and notices that his fin has grown back. At the pet show, the associate is completely weirded out by Stephen's bizarre behavior. He cannot recall visiting the pet store the day before, but when he sees that the time is shortly after 5 p.m., he remembers that he is supposed to have a date. At home, Stephen dresses himself up and goes to the restaurant to meet his date. When she doesn't show, Stephen calls and reminds her that they were on for 7 p.m. Friday. She tells Stephen that today is Sunday and to lose her number. Completely confused and heartbroken, Stephen gives in and placing an order, knowing nothing of how to order steak. On his mom's voicemail, Stephen makes up a story about the date as he walks home. He turns the light in his apartment on and off before indulging in the box of chocolates he had bought for his date. He drops some sprinkles into the goldfish's tank. As he picks up some of the chocolates he dropped, he begins to notice strange things in his apartment and investigates behind a loose board above his pantry. He discovers a car key in a cell phone containing several missed calls from Layla and one missed call from Dushan. He calls Layla and is greeted with great surprise that he is still alive after so many months and she demands to know where his British accent came from and identifies Stephen by his true name, Mark. When Stephen inquires as to why she called him that, the call drops. Stephen hears his name being called and tries to see who it is. After hearing the voice tell him, you need to stop. The lights begin to flicker, and Stephen runs scared from his flat to the elevator. Stephen looks at his reflection, as the elevator continues its descent. On floor 2, Stephen hallucinates a creature coming for him, and when he comes face to face with its beak, he wakes up on a bus. Everyone on the bus is looking at Stephen, as he sees the figure standing on the side of the road. Then notices Arthur on the bus as he exits, realizing that he is real. As he enters the museum, he tries to get JB, the security guard from before to help him, but is interrupted by Donna. Stephen sees Arthur in the museum, and excuses himself from Donna. He follows a man he saw on the bus, and is confronted by Arthur, walking on his cane. As he asks another security guard to help, the guard reveals his scale tattoo and proclaims, praise Amit. Arthur explains the philosophy of Amit to him. She grew tired of waiting for sinners to commit their sins, before punishing them. He tells Stephen that Amit judges our entire lives, including our futures, which we cannot see. Stephen quips that the historical documents have forgotten that part. Arthur believes that Amit was betrayed and imprisoned by indolent fellow gods. Had she been free, she may have prevented the fall of the Holy Roman Empire and the Holocaust, among other genocidal tragedies. Arthur tells Stephen that Amit was betrayed by her own avatar, a term which Stephen only knows from popular culture. Arthur knows about the voice in Stephen's head and sets him up to be judged by Amit. As the cane dangles, the scale on Stephen's arms. Arthur's scale tattoo shakes uncontrollably, signifying chaos within Stephen. The doors to another exhibit open and Stephen runs away from Arthur, who tells the guards to let him go. Stephen is doing inventory by 
by himself as the museum closes. As he is leaving, hears a dog crying in the distance and follows the sound. Stephen is being followed as well. As he hides from an unseen creature, Arthur announces through the museum that Stephen must return the scarab. Stephen runs into the men's bathroom to hide and is engaged in the mirror by his true alter ego Mark Spector. Mark explains to Stephen that he needs to fully give him control if they want to survive this attack. Stephen agrees and allows Mark to take him over as the creature breaks in and assaults him. The creature is then seen trying to escape, but is pulled back in and beaten to its presumed final death by a light gray clad hero with a face covering cowl, a hood, and a cape. His name is Moon Knight.